pretty shocking number in this month's market report. For starters, the average sales price in Temecula increased 34% in March compared to March of last year. Some buyers are getting priced out and throwing in the towel. We'll run the numbers and tell you what's happening starting now. Hi, I'm Jessica Janung with Active Realty. Thanks so much for checking out our video. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel if you want to learn everything you need to know about moving to the Murrieta Temecula Valley. This is our monthly market report where I tell you what's going on with our current housing market. And towards the end of this video, Chris is going to do a deeper dive into the numbers. We have a classic supply and demand problem where there is still very low supply and tons of buyer demand, and that is marching prices upward. In our current business, some of our buyer clients, especially our first time buyer clients, are getting maxed out and they are trying to decide between waiting and hoping for a more buyer friendly market environment or settling on location or features of the home, which is not a fun position to be in. And from what I've been reading, this has been happening nationwide. In this recent Redfin article that was published on April 2nd by Tim Ellis, it talked a lot about the issues in the housing market nationwide and I saw a lot of similarities to our current market. All right, the headline starts out, early indicators of home buyer demand reflect that more are throwing in the towel as prices climb to new heights and mortgage rates tick up. So they go on to say the medium home sales price increased 17% year over year, which you'll see when Chris runs the numbers is similar to Menifee, but is definitely a lot less than what we're seeing in Temecula. Uh, another important stat, 59% of homes that went under contract had an accepted offer within the first two weeks on the market. This is a new all-time high for this measure since at least 2012, which is when Redfin started taking these numbers. Uh, this is very similar to what we're seeing in our current market where most properties are um, locked up within two weeks on the market. So last important point about this article, which I can relate to in our current business, is that it's saying, Quote, some home buyers have reached their limit on bidding wars and soaring prices, says Redfin Chief, Econom Chief Economist Daryl Fairweather. Add to the mix a dwindling number of homes for sale and rising mortgage rates, and the typical family that is still searching for an affordable house may have missed the boat. The article goes on to talk about the Biden administration's infrastructure plans to incentivize zoning for multifamily homes, which could increase the supply of affordable homes and provide even more people a path to home ownership. This is sort of interesting because we have been seeing this play out for quite some time, especially in neighboring San Diego County and LA County. We are seeing a rise in multifamily projects and it appears that local governments are friendly to this plan. Builders are incentivized to build more condensed housing due to the high price of land. Take South Temecula's Rancho Saleo neighborhood, for example. It's a mix of condo buildings, two and three unit attached buildings, and single family homes that are on smaller lots. I think that this is gonna be the future of new construction in our area as land becomes more scarce. I personally am a big proponent of the single family home being a very important part of the American dream and the quality of life in our cities. For those of us who have lived in Los Angeles and other high density areas, we know the negative impact that traffic and congested areas have on the quality of our lives. So we're gonna to have to see how it all plays out. New construction. You've heard me talk about some of the local new construction companies that are now taking bids, which are going quite a bit over the asking price. Some of the other builders are still doing the normal waitlist process, but they are raising the phase release prices very rapidly on pace with the resale market. But on a more positive note, there are a couple of local builders that are still keeping their same waitlist process and have only been doing modest price increases per phase. For these builders, you are likely to start on a waitlist so it can take longer to get a home, but they are generally selling for less in my experience. Reach out to me if you want more details on the different new construction options. Chris is going to show you the numbers specific to Murrieta, Menifee, and Temecula. Hey, real quick before we get into the numbers, I want to give you an update on the team. We're pleased to report we have two proper team members also within Active Realty, and that's Chris and Scott, former clients Chris and Scott have been recruited into real estate and we're real excited to have them. So we say Jessica plus Chris plus the other Chris and Scott makes four. That's four for the price of one. All right, let's get into the numbers. As always, we are looking at single family homes. So that means no townhouse, condo, land or anything like that. Just single family homes. 
And we're looking at Marietta, Menifee, and Temecula. For the month of March 2021, City of Marietta, we have 635,977. That's up 24.5%, 25% compared to 511 last March. Menifee, 455 versus 395. That's up 15.4%. And Temecula, 749, 656 versus 559,000 last year is up 34%. Now, people are always asking us about Marietta versus Temecula and Marietta versus Menifee, things like that. So that Temecula number, that's up 114,000 on Marietta in this particular month. It, it does kind of bounce around a little bit, but that gap uh, seems to be widening quite a bit. Close sales in Marietta, 221 versus 183 last year. That's up 20.8%, 21%. Menifee, 211 versus 175, very similar, 20.6%. And then in uh, Temecula, 195 versus 154 is 26.6%. Now, I kind of want to point out uh, April and May there. You see that? The lockdown sort of lifted after that first month, month and a half there. That's when the pandemic market really started to take off. So. I would expect in June and July of this year, we'll probably see similar closed sales. That, that's the number of transactions, closed sales, uh, being pretty similar to last year, I think. It's all based on inventory. Okay, days on market. Marietta, 16 versus 39, uh, more normal. <laughs> 39, that, that's down 59%. Manaphy, 13 days on market versus 49, what it used to be, 74% and 15 in Temecula versus 36 the year before, down 58%. So let, let's, let's look at what's really going on. 15, 15 days on market. Um, they're all basically the same. 15, 13 in Menifee, and it was 16 in Marietta. So 15 days on market in Temecula. Uh, the normal cycle right now is um, a property goes on the market, say midweek, that's uh, Wednesday, Thursday. There'll be showings over the weekend and um, get a bunch of showings, get a bunch of offers, and then escrow opens. So that's basically the normal pacing, and that's why it's just such a low days on market. Number of listings. Marietta, 196 versus 356 in March of 2020, down 44.9%. Menifee, 155 versus 376 is down 58.9, 58.8%, which is 59%. And Temecula 172 versus 341 is also down 49.6%. So um, the way I've been just generalizing that for a year now is it's basically half of what it should be. Uh, normal times would be 300 to 350 listings a month to month in, in all these cities. Marietta's almost exactly the same population right now. It shows as 113, 113,000 is the population of Marietta and Temecula. The Menifee's a little smaller at 90, but it's also growing. So they're all very, very similar size. So 300 to 350 listings is what it should be, and it, it still remains very low inventory, basically half of what it should be. Thanks so much for watching. See you next week.